Good morning, everybody. I am recording um, this recording for the second time. I actually did this for you guys yesterday, and um, it was fab, uh, and went to upload it, and it just kept spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. So we are here today, and I figured, well, after I, ah, you know, uh, sat with it, used the potential of it, I thought, well, maybe, maybe there was something that we needed to add. Maybe there was something that needed to uh, be um, created along with it. So here we are. So I am just getting myself present and, and really getting back into the channel of, of the premise of the second day of this integration. Now to kind of follow back where we were last week before the Christmas was this idea of, of us being able to kind of lighten up and, and let go. And sometimes we need help letting go of those things that we don't know we're holding on to. You know, we, we've been carrying things for so long that, that they're comfortably un uncomfortable. And there's a lot of things that are stored in your physical body that are lower vibrational, emotional, uh, you know, kind of like density uh, measurements of pain, trauma, old stories spinning. You know, it's almost like if you've had windows open and it's just spinning, right? It makes everything kind of slow down. It also kind of takes your attention away because it creates pop-ups. Well, that's what old emotional, like lingering baggage does uh, in this kind of attempt to forward motion our lives. And we're wondering why it's so hard to let go of people, places, and things when we know very clearly of, of who we're becoming and what we're creating. So this is kind of why you'll notice that you'll start this forward motion and then you'll manifest something that kind of pulls you back. And what's pulling you back is, is frequency. So what's the frequency that's pulling you back? And this is important for us to pay attention to right now. So if you are noticing that you're going, you know, a few steps forward and a few steps back, notice on the back steps what's coming up. What feels like the echo? What feels like the interruption? What feels like the old story coming back? What feels like, you know, that that is what your higher self is saying, hey, I know you're trying to move forward, but you've got this little leash around your leg or you've got this old story playing or you've still got this, you know, um, this trauma playing in the back of your field. And it's mixing with this new awareness and this new desire and this new forward motion and this new routine. And, you know, like I said, is, is if you're trying to make a pumpkin pie and, you know, you're, you're going from cooking to baking, you, you have to wash your hands. You have to, you know, not add the same ingredients. Like your pie cannot contain pepper, right? And so it's like, if your bowl has pepper in it, then it's going to taste like pepper in the now moment. So it's going to be that bittersweet kind of combination of, of all the work that you've done and this new you that you're embodying, but there might be trace elements of these old lower vibrational emotions that are kind of caught in that soundtrack, that, that feeling state that kind of pulls you back. It, it makes you feel wishy-washy. It makes you feel untrusting. It makes you feel, um, you know, you're doubting your own abilities, you, you know, what to do, you know, you kind of start a routine and then you abruptly stop and you want to pay attention to this behavior, not as your behavior, like you're lacking willpower. I want you to take notice of this behavior because this behavior is coming from your programming, right? And it's just like, oh, I'm bringing pepper into my future moment. And that would look like, you know, you're in a great new relationship, but you're worried he's going to do the same thing. Or, you know, you've got this money coming and that you've been wanting, or you're getting this new job, but then you're worried about like what happened last time. And that's the thing. We take unconsciously, you know, fear and heartbreak and failure from the past into the future if we do not know it's in the bowl, right? Because it's like, alchemy is all of me, you know, and I'm not saying that we're going to like get rid of the pepper, right? Because it's not about getting rid of the past necessarily. It's about cleaning it up and purifying it. So that that pepper existed in the past. Mm, remember those great, like, you know, omelets we made, but we're not going to be bringing that into what we're making now. And so last week we really talked about grief, and grief being the biggest, most heaviest element of your field 
that is it's it's in the deepest layers of your blind spot because humans are not taught to grieve. They're not like we're we're not taught that grief is natural. We're not taught that grieving is important. And and so you can just take an observation of that. What it looks like it's like when you're crying and you're young, everyone is trying to get you to stop crying. Right. And when you're grieving, everyone's trying to fix it or make it better or or tell you to stop acting like that. And the reason why is because grief is a domino effect, which means that by your grieving, someone else is going to now bring up their frequency because like attracts like, like you become this tuning fork of this very heavy emotion. And then those around you, right, are now going into grief and, and they don't want to experience that grief of your grief or their own grief. And so they go into rescue mode and they figure out how to try to shut you down. And I mean, I'm guilty of this as a mom. I don't want my kids to cry. You know, I don't want them to hurt. Like I want to take their pain away. I, I, you know, and I don't want them to suffer. And you have to look at, this is what your ego is trying to do for you. Like your ego is either saying, suck it up, be tough. Like, you, you know, you don't care about it anyways, or your ego is like, like, Hey, you know, let's fix this. Let's go shopping. Let's, you know, go buy some, like go, go eat some sugar, you know? So the ego becomes the mother or the, you know, the father that's like, no, 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 anything but feel bad. So because it's a natural process and, and grief is the gateway to love itself, right? I mean, grief is the other side of the coin, like without, without grief, there isn't love. And without love, there isn't grief. It's literally the heads and the tails of the same coin. And we have this, very distorted relationship with grief and we have a very distorted relationship with love right we all seem to know what anger is right frustration irritation we all seem to know what humiliation feels like you know it's like and and we we kind of like like that stops you in your tracks right humiliation will stop you in your tracks like "Mm -hmm." okay right what do i need to do what action steps here do i need to go hide do I need to put a mask on? Do I need to change my whole flow? Like, what do I need to do, right? Anger is usually an action. Like, you're going to do something there. You're going to yell or scream or, or you, know, you know, whatever you're going to do. Action is usually a forward motion emotion, right? Like, you're going to take action in anger. Now, frustration, irritation, passive aggressive, right? um, kind of, uh, uh, you know, that, that resentment, you're not going to do a lot. You might put something down hard, slam a door, but that's not, that's like you suppressing your anger. Right. So, but, but see the grief is the one that feels very foreign. And that's why people say, oh, I'm okay. You know, I know my grandpa's ready to pass, or I know, you know, I know we're going to be moving to another state, or I know this breakup has to come. But you never know how you're going to be processing grief. You, you, it's not something you can anticipate. Grief is not something that you can anticipate. And unconditional love is not something that you can anticipate. And if you've ever had a child or an animal that was literally, a, you know, you're, at some point your very reason for living, you could not anticipate how much you love that, right? You, I mean, you didn't even know what love was until that came into your reality. And, and usually that is for that unconditional child or pet, right? And, and all of a sudden it's like your life has meaning, but you cannot anticipate it because love and grief are creation and destruction. And they are the, the, the entry and exit point of all physical and non-physical reality. It is actually our most important point of study. And so this idea of us kind of working to integrate grief into a new place where we can use it as love is the only thing you can do with grief. Because grief, if you've taken quantum fitness, we really dive into grief in in part one. And, you know, that's my chapter of wait and waiting, because this idea that I'm waiting for something to happen, right, or I'm carrying weight or I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders responsibility wise, or I'm physically carrying some inflammation or some body weight. It's the same hidden grief. 
Everything I just said is hidden grief. If you're waiting for something, that's actually grief in disguise because time and space don't exist. The universe has never once asked you to be patient ever. And any guru who says just be patient is doesn't understand that there's no time and space because ultimately the only thing required for you to open the door or to have that person place or thing move into your physical reality is alignment, right? Alignment. Now, when we really study quantum, the idea of quantum grief, right? And, and when I say quantum, that word is, it's thrown around a lot, but when I'm using it, it's, it's to, to uh, let you know that I'm embracing all factors. So quantum is a mathematical equation of like, limitless infinite possibilities and so when we're working with this idea of grief we don't want to put grief into a box oh it's when you lose someone right or it's when somebody dies or or when you know you um you know didn't get your job you want or you know you lost a child or something like that but it's grief is loss loss of time loss of respect loss of dignity loss of a, a relationship loss of money loss of opportunity right how many times have you gotten your hopes up like way high and then just dropped out the bottom that is a major loss right and and we because we get into this anticipation place that we're in vision and we're in manifestation of our own like imagination where it's real. Like we have created a whole realism out of it. And so when it does not come to fruition, it is a genuine loss, right? Someone doesn't show up how you expect them to loss, right? Someone abandons you, someone rejects you loss, right? You move out of one home into another loss. Even if you hated it, you get out of a toxic relationship, loss. You finish school, oh, I'm free, loss, right? So just because this door that we're closing and moving into a new chapter is maybe freedom and expansion and joy and opportunity, we cannot forget that what we just experienced is the loss of who we were in that old space. So when we do not do a little bit of, of work around each of those those ideas, what happens is they get very heavy. And they're the ones who, depending on how much of your, you know, heart and soul and memories and good times and bad times are connected with the loss, the heavier it is, right? So depending on how you were as a child, like if you had loss of freedom, right? And you can remember one time that like you lost your freedom and it, it changed you, right? So what's happened is if you didn't go into that and like, oh, hey, I just lost this. I got to do something with it, which you probably didn't. Then what's happened is that's now an element. That's an ingredient in your field, like that loss of freedom. So notice that your biggest losses are usually where your biggest effort is trying in physical moment of now. Like if I lost my freedom as a kid, it's probably my focus as an adult. I have problems with commitment now because I, I don't want to, I can't afford to lose again, right? I'd rather shut my heart down than lose my freedom, okay? Right, these opportunities that are coming in, you know, am I going to lose my time? So again, if there's a major loss around freedom, if there's a major loss around love, if there's a major loss around money, if there's a major loss around like, you know, body health, okay? major loss of your time that is kind of had to be moved through real quick because either other people help you not process it correctly, or it was a survival go, 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 go. You know, you lose your time. You got to make up for it in the present moment in the future. So you don't go, Oh, I need to go grieve that time. I lost. It's like, that is, it's not even discussed in the spiritual culture. Grief is like just now coming on the main stream. And it's been the very thing that can unlock all 12 doors of all 12 dimensions is recognizing that grief or loss and love, which is like the unity of all, unity and separation, loss, right? And unity are literally the yin and yang of the universe itself. OK, and so when we do not take both of these into consideration 
and work with both elements of grief and love to create the reality. If we leave one behind, right, then what happens is we're locking doors while programs and songs are running and it creates static because it's a vibration and it's going to affect where you're headed. And this is what I realized in my reality is when I was writing quantum fitness years ago, it was like, I just kept getting stuck. I was like, there's something missing, something missing. So you know what I did? I just had to go jump into a very painful relationship where I lost everything, loss, to, to go, oh, this loss has always been there. And I've been out running it, or I've been out trying to create it or out love it or whatever. But I'm really attracted to people, places and things in my forward motion that feel like grief because this is included. You know, it's, it's like, when we're attracted to something, it doesn't even really mean that you like it. It just means that you've done it enough time for it to be familiar, that it's done enough time for your body to connect with it. I mean, how many times have you been in a narcissistic or a very toxic relationship that w- that felt so comfortable in the beginning or so right or like the, you know, there was something so compatible about that? Maybe it was a business partner. Maybe it was a relationship. Maybe it was a home. Maybe it was a job. Maybe it was something. And it was like instant connection, even felt secure, right? And, And that is not because you were really attracted to it. It's your heart's desire. Your body was attracted to what it has already lost or has already unfinished business where there's lacking closure right? Where you lack closure, there will be a closed door. Okay. And so as I was writing this program, I realized grief is our kryptonite. It's not love. It's because we want love, but we don't want to experience the grief that might come with it. So we don't get love all the way. We get relationships that might feel like love or that we can share love in. But that's why when it comes to receiving it, it's like, oh, it's not safe, right? Because then I could lose it if I get too comfortable receiving this, right? Can I trust that? And if you're having trust issues right now, doubt, worry, fear, anxiety, you're unclear um, right now in 2022 almost of what your purpose is on earth is, if you are unclear still how to get your body into alignment, if you are unclear on how to make money now, You are not ignorant to manifestation. You're just holding vibrations that create uncertainty. You're holding vibrations that are creating grief mixed with love. And it feels scary. It feels heavy. You know, it feels like loss is just on the other side. If you really get what you want, you're getting what you want. The rug's going to be ripped out from underneath me. If you have that thought, you have grief stored in your biofield. And so this activate integration is not about mixing all the ingredients together so that you're like, oh, you won't even smell the pepper or taste the pepper. No, we want to transcend it and turn it into something else. Okay. Because love and grief are literally like they are, they are the yin and yang of the universe, right? We think it's masculine and feminine, but it really is grief and love. And everything is made from destruction and creation in the aspect of that. Now, one is physical and one is non-physical, and that's how we could describe masculine and feminine. Masculine, mass, right? That's form. You know, feminine, right, is energy. It's etheric. It's, it's, it's everywhere and nowhere, right? It's, it's the idea of creation itself, and then materialized is the mass measurement. Just kind of like I did a big blog. I hope you guys had an opportunity to read about it through Christmas, and it broke down the metaphysical ex- explanation of, of the Christ and Christ and then the, the, the miss, M-A-S, which is actually M-A-S-S, which is mass. So Christ being a term of in, uh, anointed or attuned uh, consciousness, higher consciousness created into mass, a measurement of matter, right? So this idea that we are embodied here, our consciousness, that we are the entire cosmos, but we are also a collective of all of the mass and all of the stories and all of the heavy byproduct of, of like the residue. So grief is the lowest frequency, okay, that a human can experience. 
We think it's numbness, but it's not. It's grief. Love is where I would consider that the, the highest, but it's the most natural, right? And so even though they are one coin, they are literally like polar opposites as well, okay? And so it takes a lot of energy, right, to get back down to grief. Because we, what we've done is we've created rooms in between to keep us living a life like your mom keeps this away from you and keeps this away from you and gives you this instead to keep you away from grief. So we have humiliation. We have fear, humiliation, shame, guilt, right? We have anger, resentment, grief. So you'll notice you're here a lot. And shame and guilt, humiliation, fear, probably anger, grief is usually a rock bottom experience where you're not choosing. You're literally forced into it. It's a fall all the way down experience, right? And it's not a place where you're like, hey, Jess, let's go to grief today, right? Because that's not going to be something that you're going to like desire. Your ego is not going to ever go, hey, let's go to grief because I know my magic and my you know diamonds and golds on the other side of that. You're not going to do that at least not with ego. So what happens is you'll go, hey, let's talk about this humiliating thing or this love I can't have, or why am I afraid of this? And this is usually where my, my students are, are trying to get to in our sessions. And ultimately my job is how do I get them into grief so they can quantum leap to love? Because it literally, like, if you look at it, it feels very far away from love, but because everything is like magic, like 5D, like you go to this, this love door, right? And it takes you back to grief and you go through this grief door and it takes you back to love. So we want to only work with these two integration points right now. And what we want to do is we want to bring love to our grief. And that is how you integrate. And today we're going to be working in our yang energy. So our yang energy, this time of, of year, this time of our ascension right now is where kind of we have this yin and yang energy. And this is going to be the focal point of your chi or kidneys. So we're going to be working for this particular integration in your kidneys. So your kidneys represent your life force energy, your flow, right? Your malleability, your, your um, ability to, to like channel like life force energy. It's your own life force energy moving through all of the conduits of every structure, organ, cell. And when that chi is blocked, right, you're going to experience the byproduct of a blocked chi is fear. Okay. The byproduct of a blocked chi right? It kidney wise is going to be, you know, bowel issues. Um, it's going to be sexual issues. It's going to be, um, issues in relationships. You're going to feel challenged and freedom there. Cause again, it's this life force energy. So what's not flowing, right? What's not moving, what's not going. So what we're going to do is we're going to work um, physically, emotionally, and chemically with our chi energy today. And we're going to be working to integrate our grief through our chi. All right. And then we will have um, a little hands-on work. We'll have some, uh, our light codes will come in. And once our light codes come in, you'll be doing some physical stuff with me. And then once we're complete, the guides will let you know what to do to support your energy field, your body, your emotional state after our session and, and what to do until tomorrow when we work on another area. So today, our main focus, getting you ready for this new year, this new you, is to really bring up the grief that's sitting in that chi of that life force energy. So this, this grief is going to be about your ability to live your life. There's a lot of grief there, right? This is your freedom. This is your money. This is your, um, you know, ability to speak and show up, right? And this is holding some of your biggest grief. You think that it's the loss of a loved one, loss of self, loss of opportunity, loss of awareness, loss of, you know, uh, people, places, and things that you thought were going to help you move into this life. And so there's a ton of grief sitting in your chi. Right. And this is going to block all of your forward motion and your life moving in the, in the direction of your heart 
Instead, your life may be appearing to look like it's forward motion, but what it's going to be doing is it's going to be going on the groundhog day of the hamster wheel back into the grief until you bring grief into love. All right. And this is this is awesome because we're going to be working in this kind of win win energy. We're going to be supporting our bodies and knowing that our bodies have been sorting this density for us because it didn't have anywhere else to put it. Right. We couldn't talk about it. We weren't supposed to process it. We were supposed to just move on or shut it down. And so it's sitting, it's sitting there. OK, so we're going to bring it up physically, emotionally, chemically. We're going to bring in the light codes that are going to help you and us support our integration. Like, what can we do with this? How can we turn this into love? What can we create with this? Right. If you think about your first experience of like losing yourself in a situation as a kid or, you know, your freedom or something that kind of your mind just immediately goes back to, that's probably connected to like maybe 20 or 30 chords that you future manifested this is the same story in a different context, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the chi and we're going to resurrect the grief. And as we resurrect the grief, we're going to move it first where we're going to move it as it comes up, we're going to move it down. And then we're going to bring it into the heart to neutralize your heart is the only chakra that is remains and will always be in a state of non-duality. It doesn't care, just loves you. Doesn't care what color you are. Doesn't care what happens. It just loves you, All right? And so this is going to be our washing machine, basically. But first, we have to resurrect. We have to bring up from the grave that you've been haunted from, and actually, instead of getting haunted constantly by this grief of the past, disguised as failure, injection, and abandonment, we're going to bring it up right here together with all of your higher selves. And we're going to intentionally support it, accept it, right? Allow it. Acceptance is the real definition of love. Like really be present with it. And then, and then we're going to decide and discern what we can create with it. And then we'll utilize, once we set that intention, we'll have the light codes that will come in that'll help us energetically from the higher place, really help us with those blind spots. Because the universe is always just saying, hey, just meet me halfway. You know, just work in the metaphor of it. Just get one memory. And, and again, you've opened the door so we can rush in and we can do things. But if you don't open the door, we can't come in. So this is your process of not needing to be perfect and get every ounce of grief, but be intentionally working in your own grief so that we can access the surrender of the seventh step of manifestation to have you let go of the rest and receive help, guidance, healing frequency. Because again, you're going to be focusing on the loving aspects of your own grief the universe is going to do the rest, right? And what this is going to do is instead of just going, oh, I healed my grief last week, we're going to make something out of it. And then because we're opening up the chi, your motivation is going to increase, your, you know, your whole clarity of self is going to increase, doubt's going to decrease, fear is going to decrease, right? And your body will start metabolizing a little bit better. So this class will also be um, for our quantum fitness group because we're, right now in the shadows of our own sexuality and, and kind of bumped up against this idea last night that we better kind of integrate our chi before we really start to work through our sexual empowerment of manifestation, okay? So we're gonna start our, our chi, our, our life force energy, our grief integration, our desire here is to turn all of the grief that we were unallowed or unable to support, accept, and love, we're going to bring it and resurrect it all up from our chi today, which is our freedom, right? Our sustainability, our individualism, our authentic nature, our voice of, of being able to say, hey, I like that. I don't like that. Again, it's all your freedom, okay? Expression of all of you, right? We're going to be working in that yang energy. So first and foremost, I love to, when we're doing body work, I love this idea of using the triangle. Okay. We understand that it's like, it's like the strongest force in nature. And, and it's really great because it usually takes three 
very important points to heal. So we're going to be very deliberate in this. And so I want everyone to just kind of practice with me creating a triangle with your fingers. You can even do this. I like to do this when I'm doing body work because it, it helps me apply more pressure. Right now, the inner child is always going to feel loved through touch. So we're going to be including me, myself and I in this body work. So the, the me, the my ego, right? We're going to say to ego, we're saying we're going to bring, we're going to resurrect this grief, right? And we're going to sit and accept it, but we're going to turn it into gold, like the alchemist. We're going to turn it into potential for money and opportunity. So the ego will be like, okay, as long as you don't get stuck, which you already are, right? It's like, as long as this has a purpose, then ego will be allowing of this. Now, the part of us when we are actually working with our chi energy is the inner child saying, okay, here, I don't want to hold this anymore. You can take this from me, this pressure that I'm feeling in my kidneys. Okay, I'm going to let go of this. And then the I am will be basically cleaning house with the, the light coats that we'll be bringing in. All right. So you're going to have your, your fingers like this. Okay. And understand that your kidneys are kind of your, your lower back and right where you're like you know, butt crack starts, right? If you, if you kind of put your, your um, triangle down first and then right behind you, I'm going to give you a butt shot here. Got to move my chair out of the way. Like right here, okay? You see that? Kind of looking like this, all right? I'm going to make sure you can see that, okay? And then you want to join your triangle together and that's going to really help you push down. And you're going to like push down in this position as if you're really pushing down from your thumbs, like you could even like do this, right? And you're just moving your energy. I'll give you the rest of the instructions in a minute. I just want you to see what I'm doing and really get in there, okay? And we're going to start with a downward motion like this, okay? Like this. And you can really get your thumbs in. You can really get your pressure in there. And now we're not doing like worrying so much about the exact meridian points, but we are setting the intention that we are moving our grief that is sitting in our chi kidneys. We are moving it into our feet, into our, like, into our hips, into your legs. You're like imagining that this grief is going all the way down into the ground of you, like into your feet. And you're thinking, why would you want it to go there? Because we have to feel it. We have to, we have to let it be real. We have to like have it grounded as like, don't try to run. Don't try to give it away yet. It's like, it, you've got to bring it all the way down because it's lodged right there. If you've got hip issues, if you've got back issues, if you've got knee issues, feet issues, if you've got gut issues, this is all chi related. All right. And so this is going to help you get that energy first down. We want to say, Hey, I'm bringing it all the way down into the ground. Like it's a forced rock bottom that you don't have to experience. We're bringing it all the way down. Now, before you start doing this, we've got to finish our directions here. You're going to be moving your energy down, but first you're going to set an intention. You're going to talk to your body. You're going to maybe sit with going, okay, what, what grief am I carrying around freedom, right? So when we look at the, the, the word fear, the word fear is anticipation of loss, right? And so we break it down in quantum fitness as two things. We say, if I'm afraid, what am I afraid to lose? Also, what am I afraid to lose again? Okay, there's two elements of grief hidden in fear because we've lost before. So we're afraid to lose again. Some of us are still losing. We don't even know. We're just running PTSD. And some of us are terrified of what we could lose. All right. So it's like two counterproductive grief frequencies lodged in your chi. So you want to ask yourself, what have I already lost around the idea of my freedom? Like, what have I already lost? Like, what am I losing? Like, what have I lost now? Like, what do I can't not do? Right. What did I lose before? Right. And what am I afraid to lose over here? Right. We got the me, myself, and I of grief here. What am I afraid I'm going to lose over here? Right. Future. What have I, what am I like 
lost right now, like right now, do you have freedom of time? Do you have freedom of money? Do you have freedom in your relationship? If you, the, the answer is no, if you don't have freedom in your body, you are actually running a grief program now, but it's in every moment of every day. Looks like laziness, procrastination, bitterness, insecurity, but it's actually you're grieving now. And old grief, what have I already lost? Right? Because if you lost it and it's heavy, you're still in a loss if you haven't integrated it. So you got your three points. What have I already lost in the past? What am I losing here every day over and over again? And what am I afraid to lose in the future? And you just pick three points. Like, we're just going to go, okay, what? Like, I lost my privacy as a kid, right? I lost my freedom of my own, you know, mind. I couldn't, you know, I had no freedom. Find something and just point to it energetically, okay? Find a lack of freedom right now. So say right now, I don't have the money to go visit my friends. Great. Find one point that makes you feel heavy. Now, find something that you're anticipating of the loss or worry that you might lose or you could lose or a potential and hold that third point. Okay. Now, you're just going to take a breath and imagine that they're all coming in to your fingers, right? The past, the present, and the future. Loss of your freedom, your life force energy. Right. And this is where your bravery is on the other side of this. This is where courage, this is where genius ideas are. This is where more freedom is. This is where, um, you know, lots and lots of opportunities are hiding underneath this because this is running. We've got grief running in the past, grief running now, grief running in the future. So we're not really going to get that far if we do not open up the chi and move the energy. So we're going to move it first. We're going to take all three points this memory one, memory two, memory three, take a breath, put it into your fingers. And then you're going to, as I'm doing the light codes, don't start yet. You're going to press down your chi as if you're moving the grief manually down into your hips, down into your buttocks, down into your like calves, down into your ankles and down into your feet. If some of it gets into the ground, great. If it wants to go into the ground, great. But if it wants to stay in your feet, great. It's also just about allowing it to like move through the bottom part of you, that masculine part of your like lower anchor, like material reality of life, how you move, how you live, how you behave, right? How you show up. Okay. We're going to move it down and we want to get it circulating into the bloodstream. We want to get those memories open and active we want to move the energy of the body. This is going to stimulate your lymphatic system and your heart as we're moving. I want you to really dig and imagine like you're literally like pushing grief down into your feet, down into your feet. All you're doing is you're holding these three ideas. If you start to cry, cry. If you start to get mad, get mad. Just keep doing it as I'm doing the light codes. The universe will do the rest. We're just saying, hey, meet us halfway here. Okay. So we're going to start this 